have you noticed any difference between yourself and your TV show self? Uh, yes, I do not get uh, sad nearly as easy as he does. He is very mopey. I am not very mopey. I am a very happy person. How did the rest of the system react to you coming out as asexual? Everybody was really supportive of it. They were very cool. They were very happy for me that I was able to like own that and really, you know, embrace that part of myself. It, it, it was really validating. Everybody was really validating and, and it was awesome. Kit, how do you feel about mistletoe's integration and how, if at all, has it affected your thoughts on your own integration? It is no secret that I was not a fan of mistletoe. I feel like she was really aggressive towards Wynn and did a lot of really shitty stuff. So I am super happy that she's gone. Now, like I get that she was really broken and had like a lot of really shitty things to deal with. I can understand like why she did what she did. Like after we learned about her past and everything, like I get it. I don't approve of it, but I get it. How did it affect my own thoughts about integration? I mean, it, it made me kind of think of it more seriously. Okay, this is a little bit more real than I was kind of looking at it before. The last time you were out pre-surface, my chemical romance was still together. Now they aren't. What are you, how are you feeling about this? What? Is it strange coming in from a completely different universe and culture to Wynne's life? How do you cope with it and adapt to the different way of living? That is very difficult for me. The culture that I remember is not a culture that Wynne is allowed to be a part of because she is white. So I have to find other ways to feel fulfilled in that way. In this coming November, I wanted to make an ofrenda for Hernando. Because even though I know that he is not real, I very much wanted to say goodbye to him in a special way. Luckily, uh, around that time of year, it is very, very common in many cultures to celebrate and honor uh, past loved ones. So, uh, because Wynne is Wiccan, we are going to do a Wiccan ancestor honoring ceremony that will have the same idea as Dia de los Muertos, but without offending anyone. Do you fly in the headspace? And if so, what is it like? Is it annoying when you come up front and you're grounded? Um, I do sometimes fly in the headspace, like not like fly like around, but like I'll like jump up and I can like jump a little bit higher because I'll hover or, you know, like I'll hover just to be like sassy and like make myself taller than everybody and gain authority. <laughs> but like, you know, I can fly and stuff, but like it's lonely up there and so I don't want to. Um, I'm not really annoyed by not being able to fly out here because down here is where the people are and the people are like, are where I like to spend my time. How does it feel to be active again? It's way different. Like, I kind of didn't realize time had passed. Like, I guess, okay, so like time and DID is super, super weird. And so like, There'll be memories, I'll be like, yeah, do you remember when this happened? And when it's like, yeah, that's from 2010. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't really remember anything outside of 2002 other than like bits and pieces. So I thought it was still 2002. Yeah, oh, also, yeah, like my best friend died. Like that was so, that was such crap to wake up and then be like, oh, what's this tattoo on her shoulder? Oh my God, it's because my best friend Kelsey is dead. She died in her sleep and I will never see her again. And I never got to say goodbye. I mean, really nobody got to say goodbye because it was so unexpected, but like, oh my God, I never even got to like see her. Has your understanding of your place in the system evolved at all since you last talked about it? Do you identify with any of the general labels for altar such as protector? Do you use the term fictive for yourself or would you feel that you are different enough from Lido and Sensei that the term does not describe you? That is many, many questions in one question. We will start from the beginning. Has my understanding of myself changed? Yes. Uh, last time we did the Ask an Altar video, I was still very, very new. I did not really understand things. I was, I was, I had finally come to the realization that I was not Lido from the TV show, but I was a new Lido based on a TV show. Uh, and I was very, very bitter because I still had many, many memories of a life before. I have more come to peace. There's still a small amount of sadness that surrounds that. However, I have found that there are so many exciting things to do in this world. Do you identify with general labels for altars such as a protector? Not especially. I still, I still understand myself as effective. I am very, very different from the TV Lido though. Does it make you annoyed when you wake up in the body with makeup on? Honestly, it bugs me way more when we're wearing heels. Cause like, I don't have to actively know I'm wearing makeup. Like I just avoid mirrors and I can pretend it's my face, <laughs> but I can't uh, pretend I'm not wearing heels. Like 
they're there, I can see them and I have to adjust the way I walk and why can't we just wear tennis shoes? Does it make you annoyed when you wake up and the body has makeup on? It does not. <laughs> Did you have any crushes while Wynn was growing up? If you had, did you act on them? Okay, so there was this one girl that we grew up with. We went to school, middle school with her and high school with her and college with her. And like, I had Mondo crush. So like we were hanging out one day and we were like, let's try kissing. And then she did and she like super wasn't into it. So that was a little heartbreaking for me. But you know, it was, it was whatever, you know, we got to have a shot and you know, Wynn eventually started having like low key crushes on her too, but like not nearly to the level that I did. Um, but she, you know, it, we turned out to be really, really different. So it was better that we didn't date. Yeah, that was, that was my, that was my high school crush. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about being a part of the system now? Do you like coming out more or staying in? I mean, I'm generally staying in, like there's no real reason for me to be out. Like I don't want to go to work. You know, I don't want to do chores around the house, so I don't. I just stay inside. Like if sometimes, like we'll, I'll chat with a friend. Like I chat with Nan and Evan and Jeremy a lot. Um, they're internet friends of ours. But like I don't know. Like most people don't want to hang out with a 12 year old, so I'm just inside on the beach or in my little house, and that's what I do. Do you like watching Sense8, or is it too much for you? Are you excited for the movie that is coming out? I have mixed feelings on Sense8. It is a little bit hard for me to watch season one because season one is what Wynn had watched in completion by the time it was created. So what she saw on that TV show is what I remember as my own life. In season two, I can disconnect myself. I see this and I was like, oh, someone wrote a story about me. But season one, it's tied into to fake memories that I sort of have, but I know they're not real. I know they're not real. So I am looking very, very forward to the season finale, the series finale, because they left on such a big cliffhanger. You cannot leave a story like that. So I'm very eager to see what happens and how my character saves the day because he's amazing, because I'm amazing. What would happen if one of the alters has a significant other or crush, but the host has a separate one? System teamwork is what would happen. In our situation, Wynn is married to Andrew, so we just kind of have an understanding that we are collectively married to Andrew. That doesn't mean that we have like emotional love for him, We're not romantically involved with Andrew, that's just Wynn, but we respect her relationship. So like, even if one of us was to develop feelings for someone else, we wouldn't act on that because we really care for Andrew and we know that he would be devastated if any of us did something like that. What do you think integration will feel like? I don't know and right now frankly I don't want to know. I'm not ready to know about that. What was it like to meet everybody else? Um, I mean it was weird. It was really jarring because it's like who the heck are all these people? Why are they here? <laughs> We're all like laughing and crap down on the beach and my therapist was like you should go say hi and I was like oh my god no. <laughs> But, I don't know, it's cool now. I guess, like, now that I know everybody and we've kind of established ourselves as a team and we work as a team, and it's kind of cool to be like a part of that. Is there any way to explain the baby? Okay, so if you have not watched the other Ask an Altar video, there is a baby on the island. And for a very long time, nobody knew what the baby was. Since then, we have learned a small amount about the baby. It is not really an altar, it is not really a fragment. What Jonathan says is that when he broke off, then the baby was sort of a bit, like a piece that broke off with him, kind of solidifying when, as she was, when Jonathan happened, when the first altar was sort of being formed. But that opens many, many, many questions. Can alters be developed pre-verbal? Was when older, but there was like a baby part of her mind that turned into a baby when Jonathan split off? What on earth happens to a baby to make it develop alters? Many, many questions. None of these questions can be answered because we do not have a time machine. So we do not think about it very much. What's the first thing you would do in a zombie apocalypse? Die, probably. <laughs> I, like, I feel like we would either like instantly get eaten right off the, at the beginning, or we would somehow with like all of our combined strengths become like a super survivor and last all the way till the end. Lately you've been talking about how you feel very protective big sistery to Kim Kim. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Do you feel like your role in the system has changed at all since Kim Kim has arrived? Yes and no. Okay, so 
this is like all speculation at this point, so roll with me. So our therapist talked about how she feels like Mistletoe leaving and Kim Kim coming out is sort of like a, a real time uh, reliving of what happened with Kim, uh, Wynn as a kid. You know, Mistletoe was there to get good memories and then the good memories stopped happening <laughs> and, and then Kim Kim was dominant. And Kim Kim's very like bitter and angsty and you know, whatever. And I think that my role has sort of been tied to that too. Um, you know, because I've been around since when was four. And so, like, as I grew, I feel like that was, like, kind of an awakening for me. Like, I didn't absorb good memories. I just, like, I was the good memories. Like, I was the one who was fun and playful and, like, didn't give a shit. And so, I think, you know, my, like, super motherly feelings toward Kim Kim now are very much tied up in, like, sort of, like, the real darkness of what was happening during middle school or you know maybe I just already super love the littles and Kim Kim came to me and she was really vulnerable and I was like oh my god I'll take care of you and maybe that's it so maybe I'm like super just reading into this for nothing um my role in the system hasn't necessarily changed like maybe I've stepped up my game a little bit and making sure everybody's been like organized and stuff but I've always been a really type a person so that's not like I've, I'm just like more aggressive about it now I guess <laughs> have you experimented with any food since the Nevada trip if so what are your favorite types of food so far I have not. Food is very good. Food is very good, but it is better. It is always better when you share it with someone you love. So, I have not had an opportunity to gather together friends or family or anything like that. And so, I have not tried yet because I would much rather share that experience with them than go out and experience food all by myself with nobody to share it with. Do you ever bind to feel more comfortable in the body or is it something you want to discuss with the system? Um, I have considered it, I've looked at binders, but honestly, um, I feel like my situation, that would just make things worse for me because Wynne is very feminine and like very openly female and everybody knows she identifies as female. If I were to try to bind or do other things to pass as male, people who knew her and didn't know she had DID would raise their eyebrow and be like what's up with that you know and it would just draw unwanted attention to my very awkward situation as a cis male in a female's body can you say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious yes i can that was a mean question you wanted me to trip up because i have an accent and a very forced accent because this body is not used to speaking with an accent you tried to get me but you didn't get me because i can say it you consider yourself trans um jumping i guess back on the last no i don't um because i don't see this as my body it's not like this is my body and it just has the wrong parts you know it is legitimately this is win's body i'm just borrowing it sometimes the body that I identify with, like in the headspace, how I present in the headspace and stuff, I am born male. What kind of gothic realness do you like the most? Punk goth, Victorian goth, or industrial goth? Okay, so I super just had to look those up because I had no idea what the distinction between those three were, but I'm pretty sure industrial goth is my favorite. Like, the goggles and the chains and weird like spirally wigs. I would totally dress like that. You remember being a fragment. What was it like to develop like that? Okay, so when I was a fragment, I didn't care about anything. All I wanted to do was feel masculine. So like I would come out and I would feel masculine and that would give Wynn a masculine strength feeling. I mean, when Wynn was in college, some shady stuff was going down and I actually started to care for the first time. I was like, whoa, whoa, I need to step in here and I'm gonna help us get through this. So like that was like my first like development into something more was was that I cared about something for the first time. How do you feel about having an accent for a language you do not know? Have you ever thought about learning Spanish? Does it feel awkward having an accent for a language I do not speak? Yes, yes it does. Because people are like, well, why do you have an accent? And I cannot speak in Spanish to make it seem like this is something that is normal for the body to do. I would very much like to learn Spanish. I am a little, I'm a very proud man. I'm a very proud man. I'm a little, embarrassed to learn Spanish from a textbook. To start by saying, where is the bathroom? This is a library. Because in my mind, in, in my belief, this is a language I should already know. So starting back with a grade one textbook is a little humiliating. I would much, much rather learn through immersion, if that is at all possible, if I could find someone who speaks very fluently, who will teach me things and, and, and make it feel more natural. That is my preferred way of learning. But honestly, yes, I would very, very much like to learn Spanish so I don't feel so 
odd. Kim Cam, what did you do during the time you were hidden in the headspace? I'm pretty sure you meant Kim Cam, but I feel like if I had like my own personal vlog, it'd be like Kim Cam. Where, what did I do while I was hidden? I mean like kind of nothing, like time's super blurred together. Like if I had to say before I knew outside what time was like, I'd say I was back there for like a month, like moping about my life, you know, and hanging out with this weird quiet kid. Like, and then I come back and it's been like 16 years. <laughs> so I don't, I didn't do much of anything except for like feel bad for myself. How come you always have such a lovely, exciting attitude when you are out? Because the world is fabulous. Everybody else in the system has doubts about the world. They think that it's a dark and gloomy place and they must be brave and, and you know, protect themselves. And we, we bought a taser, uh, but we don't need a taser. The world is a beautiful place full of beautiful people. And there are some people, they have their own issues and they take it out on other people. But the world is such a beautiful place full of such good people. Why would you not celebrate that? All right, that's everything. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. We love doing these ask and alter things because we get to kind of learn more about each other and ourselves because these are questions that we never would have thought to ask one another. And so, yeah, thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions. We're sorry we couldn't get to everyone's questions. We tried to get as many questions that were all encompassing as possible. But yeah, thank you so much to every single person who submitted questions and who support our channel at all. The, everyone who subscribes, everyone who views and doesn't subscribe, everyone who gives us a thumbs up, everyone who comments on any of our videos, like you guys are awesome. You guys make this channel possible. You guys drive us to make more and better content for you. So um, thanks for being forgiving that this video was up a week late. <laughs> um, I hope you loved it and I love all of you and I hope you have really great days. Bye. Yeah, we'll see you on the flip side. Bye. Bye, Nee. <laughs>